At the man's words, Zhang stared at him, detecting the looming conflict, consistent with his instinct. The man lurched forward, pointing a strong strike, yet Zhang was one stride ahead. With quick spryness, he evaded the assault, looking as the man's clenched hand collided with the ground with horrendous power, breaking it into shards. As Zhang took off through the air, limiting any association with the man, he protected his face with one hand, peering toward the irate assailant with force considerations dashing through his brain as he contemplated the meaning of the Shia family. The man's disposition sold out a firmly established rage, provoking Zhang to perceive the weightiness of the circumstance. With gritted teeth and a threatening glare, the man flooded forward with disturbing speed, shutting the hole between them instantly, drawing his sword. The man recognized Zhang's deftness, recognizing his rival's quickness. Detecting the acceleration, Zhang tossed back his hood, uncovering his decided articulation. With a quick motion, he brought Minimal Nine's harmful fog, covering the region. Staring at the man, Zhang indicated to Minimal Nine that there was compelling reason need to limit themselves any longer. Upon Zhang's order, Minimal Nine emerged from the whirling fog, her look fixed on the man with a deadly force. Understanding Zhang's order, she recognized with a quiet gesture. Seeing the noxious fog appeared to stir up the man's hostility further. He howled at Zhang, addressing whether he really accepted he could threaten him again with a similar strategy. Before Zhang could institute his reprisal, a novice mediated, tending to the man as Yung Tai and stressing the requirement for watchfulness. At the voice, Yung Tai's disposition moved unexpectedly. He gritted his teeth, gradually going to confront the newbie, an obvious feeling of dread washing over him. Zhang watched peacefully, inquisitive about the unfurling circumstance. A figure with blue hair rose up out of behind Yung Tai, hung in a hood, plainly irate. He fixed Yung Tai with a threatening glare, requesting to know why he was available as opposed to looking for somebody as taught. Yung Tai noticeably shuddered, his trepidation obvious as he battled to offer a clarification. Before Yung Tai could express a word, the man cut him off, twirling around with a contemptuous look. He marked Yung Tai as useless, faulting him for little more than inconvenience. The words struck Tai like a blow, rendering him considerably more panicked. Before he could respond, the man delivered a strong punch underneath his jawline, leaving Yung Tai faltering from the effect. Yung Tai lurched back, blood streaming from his nose. The man, an individual from the Shia family, radiated an imposing emanation. He fixed his look on Yung Tai, his appearance deadly, as he emphasized that Jiang Tai was something like a simple lap canine of the Shia family, disgraceful of summoning its name. Yung Tai quickly dropped to his knees, bowing before the man and asking for pardoning. He vowed not to repeat his slip-up and guaranteed that there would be no further disturbances. In the meantime, Zhang tactfully unfolded his hood and noticed the scene without distinguishing the man's presence. It immediately unfolded on Zhang that this individual represented a more greater danger than the prior champion. As Zhang Tai rose to his feet, the man moved toward Zhang with a contrite tone, crediting his friend's way of behaving to his forceful propensities. He offered pay for the difficulty caused. Zhang assured him there was no requirement for concern, declining any proposal of compensation. After hearing the man's request, Zhang was met cheerfully as the man ventured nearer, his disposition oozing a powerful energy as he stared at Zhang, proposing a joint excursion to the desert. Zhang, keeping up with his silence, returned the man's look for a few minutes, considering his proposition. Walking out on them, Zhang bit by bit separated himself, declining the man's greeting, expressing his inclination for isolation on his process. Noticing Zhang's takeoff peacefully, the man found him charming, mindful of Zhang's enlivening as an otherworldly expert, a heavenly class of creation. As Zhang separated himself, Yung Tai rose to his feet and asked about proceeding with his hunt. The man's look moved towards Yung Tai, and with a steady stare, he dismissed the thought noticing that the opportunity had likely passed at this point. Having translated the hints, the man reasoned that the young lady they looked for had escaped the city and probably expected to navigate the desert toward the closest station. He removed his hood, uncovering his face, and taught Yung Tai not to let her arrive at the inn alive, requesting him to mobilize all scattered workers. The man left, 
leaving Jung Tai to gesture in affirmation and conform to the order. With a gesture and a quiet affirmation, Jung Tai acknowledged the mandate. The spread of mankind across the planet had birthed various urban communities. At this point, with the stirred period came the interruption of monsters, secret domains and prisons, requiring the constant variation and fortress of human settlements against these strong powers. In the ongoing time, just those stirred people, driven by the quest for influence, wandered back to these districts to fight beasts, climb in levels and gather wealth. These locales are currently normally alluded to as the Wildlands. As Jang crossed the territory, he experienced a multitude of rodents. Following a few hours, he arrived at a barren and frail segment of the city. As he ventured, Jang detected a developing bewilderment. Regardless of his expected objective being the troll monster's home, he ended up meandering for a really long time without appearance. Dusk had dropped at this point. He stayed a long way from his objective. Minimal Nine, sensing her craving, got a rodent and roosted atop Clatterhead. However, she before long found it was an unacceptable feast. Minimal Nine perceived that not all prey was satisfactory, understanding her insightful taste. As they navigated, Jang saw a conspicuous difference. While he had experienced various considerable beasts before, the area currently appeared devoid of them. Such animals yielded irrelevant devouring focuses. There's no time to waste, and Jang realized he was unable to stand to give in case it imperiled his enlistment in the Night Watch. As Jang pushed forward, his center strengthened, lost in examination. Unexpectedly, the sky obscured and downpour poured down. Amidst this storm, an enormous bug sneaking nearby got a quick look at Jang, plummeting with purposeful gradualness. It fixed a dangerous look upon him. Jang extended his hand to the side, inclination the raindrops patter against his skin. Perceiving the mysterious substance inside the downpour, he comprehended that he had coincidentally found a region overflowing with monster lays. Regardless of the initial slip-up in finding the home, he was unable to contain his fulfillment at the revelation. Now, all that remained was to quickly find the beast and fill the devouring measure. Interestingly, minutes after the fact, Jang looked back and detected the animal edging nearer, their eyes locked, and a serious quiet fell between them. Loosening up for a few seconds, Minimal Nine emerged, her look fixed on the coming beast. She asked of Jang whether he wanted for her help. Jang lifted his head somewhat, zeroing in on the animal. He answered that mediation wasn't required, as the beast's level appeared low, its size just marginally bigger than the others they had experienced. Jumping all over the chance, the beast landed and prepared its sharp extremities for an attack. With a threatening glare, it lurched at Jang with its piercing appendages, yet Jang deftly dodged the hits with agile jumps. Then, at that point, exploiting the open, he assembled his solidarity and jumped with extraordinary power. Instantly, Jang ended up atop the beast, his clench hand firmly gripped as he readied to strike. The animal, noticing Jang, shuddered out of uncontrollable dread, trepidation, its psyche dashing with disarray. With a strong blow, Jang struck the beast, sending its body colliding with the ground, life doused, and the floor broke into pieces. As Jang considered, Minimal Nine arose, her hand laying on her temple as she conveyed insight about additional beasts' appearance. Frightened by her voice, Jung broke, liberated from his rye, projecting a look to the side, his surprise obvious. The resonating effect of his assault had attracted the consideration of other sneaking beasts. The area remaining atop the beast's dormant body, Jang saw the infringing monster bugs. Responding quickly, he brought the knife he obtained in the mysterious domain, utilizing the harmful fog with assurance in his eyes. He went to Minimal Nine and proclaimed that it was the ideal opportunity for a banquet. Their looks turned deadly as they locked onto the oncoming monster bugs. Jang checked in with Minimal Nine, who confirmed her preparation. Decisively enacting Minimal Nine's harmful fog, Jang quickly charged forward, knife close by. Suddenly of movement, he struck at the bugs, cutting through their bodies and tainting them with a dangerous fog. With each fight, their levels flooded quickly, proceeding to connect with beasts along their process. Back guaranteed no less than two additional level headways in simple minutes. The animals fell, either capitulating to mortal injuries or the destructive impacts of the harmful fog. In a moment, 
the beasts lay dead, forming a hill of cadavers. Zhang drew closer and requested that Little Nine consume the remaining parts of these animals. She enthusiastically consented, broadening her arms wide. Unexpectedly, she stopped, her attention attracted to something moving toward, a presence huge, powerful, and promisingly fulfilling. At minimal Nine's disclosure, Zhang quickly turned his look in a similar course, noticing her elevated energy. It occurred to him that the oncoming substance should be the supervisor. Facing the heading of the looming danger, he expanded. His hand, his demeanor solidifying with assurance. With a signal, he directed Minimal Nine to attack, her intention reflected in his own determination. As the manager moved closer, its outline rose up out of the fog. Minimal Nine, unfazed, launched her attack. Not long after, struggled cries pierced the air. Zhang, hearing a particularly female voice from the animal, turned his attention towards it, his demeanor a blend of shock and disarray. Minimal Nine's misconception became clear as the coming figure uncovered herself to be a lady, not the expected manager. Zhang's assault unintentionally made her dress tear, and she slumped to the ground, oblivious. Reviewing the scene, Zhang contemplated the nature of this baffling individual, uncertain of her origins or capacities. After a couple of seconds, the lady stirred, her eyelids fluttering open, looking up at the sky. A surprised demeanor caught her face as she pondered her surroundings and the situation transpiring. With a steadying hand, she propelled herself upright, the other naturally finding her head as she bit by bit sorted out the situation. Scrutinizing the new surroundings, she reviewed not showing up at this place, her hand still laying on her head as she tried to figure it all out. Jang gravitated towards settling next to her, his elbows kneeling down as he shut his eyes, a gentle grin gracing his lips as he asked if she was conscious. At the sound of Jang's voice, she snapped to attention, contemplating his character. Acting quickly, she rose to her feet and immediately reduced most, if not all, connection with him, assuming a cautious stance. Staring at Jang, she demanded to know his identity and encouraged him not to draw any nearer. Ascending to his feet, he turned towards her and, in a measured tone, consoled her that she need not dread, explaining that he was just a profession transitioner who had wandered into the desert to battle beasts. He further assured her that his intentions were not to cause harm. After looking into it further, she remembered Jang's personality, setting a hand over her heart. She motioned towards Jang with the other, fixing him with a piercing look as she blamed him for being the assailant from an earlier experience. Jang's disposition shifted to one of disquiet after hearing this. He shut his eyes briefly, then with a rueful grin, offered his apologies, conceding that he had confused her with a beast in the past. Surprised by Jang's attractiveness, she experienced a warmth spread across her cheeks. Turning towards him, she addressed how anyone could contrast exquisite young ladies such as herself with beasts, finding his supposition pretentious. Frenzy flooded inside her, inciting her to madly check her features, ensuring her nose and ears were flawless. Jang stayed quiet, watching her intently. Reviewing the power he had applied during the assault, he marveled at her resilience as she seemed strong, as though the incident hadn't happened. Considering her character and how she had gotten through his attack, he wound up increasingly charmed. After a few seconds, consoled by her absence of wounds, she progressively quieted down, she extended her hand aside, and the brilliant ring enhancing her finger shined, emanating a lively, efficient power energy. This ring, similar to a watch, enlightened, showing the ongoing time. Noticing the hour, she perceived that she had waited excessively long. With a quick decision, she got some distance from Jang, energetically determined to leave before anyone could capture her. As she gradually separated herself, Jang maintained his silence, his look fixed upon her, pondering the reasons for her retreat and the character of those chasing after her. The lady edged further away, but unexpectedly stopped in her tracks, with a hand pressed against her mouth. She anxiously began to gnaw at her nails. It didn't take Jang long to detect the disquiet emanating from the lady. Moving closer, he noticed her jumpy disposition and asked if everything was okay. As Tara's grasp tightened, she unobtrusively looked back, eyes shut offering a stressed grin. She explained that there were beasts up ahead, and lacking ability in battle, 
she opted to step back yet again and leave Jiang to face them. Within minutes, her apprehension dissipated, and she turned away from him, offering a goodbye wave. That's all there is to it, she proclaimed, making plans to leave. Seeing her unexpected flight, Jiang's face shifted decisively with a confused demeanor. He watched her go, pondering on the clear misuse of her acting talents. As the rain fell, the lady left. Jiang meandered the area, pondering what was happening. The possibility of encountering beasts ahead pleased him. It aligned with his goals, as these specific beasts posed no challenge for him. However, despite the opportunity to procure devouring points, he recognized an approaching problem. Jiang's demeanor turned serious as he cocked his head, mulling over the challenge of confronting other work transformers. The desert had for quite some time been an untamed space, drawing in people participated in acts of violence and robbery. Questions crawled into his psyche in regards to the wisdom of protecting the lady he had encountered before, considering the risks implied. As Jiang submerged himself in examination, Minimal Nine arose, pointing ahead with a serious demeanor. She made him aware of the oncoming swarm of beasts. Instead of feeling dread or pondering retreat, Jiang's face illuminated with charm. Turning slightly towards Minimal Nine, he communicated his satisfaction after finding out about the large number of beasts ahead. His euphoria was brief. Turning his head to the side, he was met with a sight that sent shock coursing through him. Many giant insects arose before him, looking like the ones he had recently vanquished. Among them lingered a monstrous specimen, its look trickling with malevolence as it focused on him. A strong energy wrapped Jiang's body, he surveyed the bugs and understood the weightiness of the situation. Engaging a few of them individually wouldn't pose a challenge. However, the sheer number now converging upon him rendered a face-to-face -face showdown unthinkable. As the giant bugs crawled nearer, he kept a steady, focused look at them, recognizing the lady's prior advance warning with growing conviction. Despite being encircled by beasts, Jang experienced a positive feeling. He found comfort in fighting these animals over engaging with other work transformers. As the giant bugs grew progressively upset, their dangerous intent driving them forward with flurry, Jang couldn't suppress his fulfillment with the looming opportunity to acquire devouring value. He welcomed their quick development without a second thought. Jang drew his two blades, his body transmitting an extraordinary and smothering energy as he locked his look onto the oncoming beasts. Instructing Minimal Nine to release the harmful fog, she quickly followed with a firm gesture. Decisively, the fog started to leak from the sharp edges gripped in his grasp. In a moment, the giant bugs surrounded him, jaws expanding wide in anticipation of an attack. Regardless of the surrounding noxious fog around Jang's structure, he remained unmoving for a few pulses. As one of the titanic eight-legged creature thrusted towards him, Jang's movements blurred with extraordinary speed. Utilizing the blades and Minimal Nine's poisonous fog, he flooded forward, slicing through the bug's body in a solitary quick movement, contaminating it with the venomous murkiness in the process. Midair, Jang cast a wild glare back at the beasts, his demeanor deadly as he pondered their newfound speed, a confounding improvement. His attention immediately redirected, another monster bug seizing the opportunity tearing towards him with disturbing speed. As the monster bug crawled nearer, its look loaded up with malevolence, ready for an attack. Jang quickly detected its presence. Immediately, he looked back, seeing its attempt to launch a surprise assault, evoking a sprinkle of shock from him. However, the giant bug's doomed endeavor wouldn't surprise Jang. Just as the monster bug prepared for action, Jang sprang with lightning speed, cutting its body into pieces with his blades. Suddenly of movement, the divided remnants flowed to the ground as Jang smoothly landed. Minutes later, standing with the two knives held firmly in his grasp, his body exuded the poisonous fog summoned by Minimal Nine. With a look loaded with assurance, he focused on the bug's dead structure, sensing something amiss. Despite quickly thwarting the assault and dispatching the animal in a moment, he noticed a small cut on his mid-region, a testament to the short battle. As the smaller insects flooded forward with accelerating speed, Jang quickly grasped the realization that these beasts were coordinating their efforts, a disturbing disclosure. Upon closer inspection, 
Jang saw a bug that stood apart distinctly from the others, with six eyes and a vastly bigger size. He quickly concluded it as the supervisor among them. This realization provoked him to consider whether this telling figure was orchestrating the actions of the others. In a split second, a multitude of bugs emerged, surrounding Jang as Minimal Nine's poisonous fog exuded from his body. Jang fixed his look upon the manager bug. As opposed to escaping, he remained rooted in place. It unfolded on Jang that the thousands of beasts occupying the region shared a unified strategy, both in their sheer numbers and their tactics. This realization shed light on why this particular region remained untouched by others. With a determined expression, Jang fixed his look on the supervisor, examining that the way to overcoming the multitude of smaller beasts lay in vanquishing their chief. However, as he assessed the vast number of animals surrounding him, he recognized the considerable challenge ahead. Lost in his viewpoints, Jang was startled as Minimal Nine rose up out of the poisonous fog, putting her hand on his shoulder to draw his attention. Arising steadily, her demeanor grave, Minimal Nine guided her look solidly at the manager insect. With a serious demeanor, she conveyed to Jang her perception of the situation, revealing that the beasts were attempting to usurp their lord. Jang's confusion expanded at this disclosure. He turned his head slightly towards her, inquisitive about the meaning behind her words. Minimal Nine regarded the beasts with scorn, finding their arrogance striking. With a sobbing signal, she lifted her hands to her sides, tilting her head back to the sky, and released a reverberating thunder. At the sound of Minimal Nine's thunder, the bugs finally recognized her as the Bug Mother. Decisively, the smaller insects dispersed in chaos, escaping at seeing their apparent chief's position. Jang found himself somewhat shocked, considering whether the beast's behavior originated from their bug-like nature. Minimal Nine moved toward him, slanting her head slightly as she revealed that she had cut off the connection between the supervisor bug and its subordinates. Jang hadn't guessed that Minimal Nine's capacities could be applied in such a way. With the beasts thrown into chaos, Jang guessed that overcoming them would now be essentially more straightforward. Displaying his two blades to each side, he fixed the supervisor with a lethal look, expressing his appreciation to Minimal Nine for her powerful intervention. He determined that the moment had come to kill the supervisor for the last time. After hearing Jang's order, Minimal Nine returned to her original form. Fixing the supervisor with a deadly glare, she responded with a straightforward yet devoted, Yes, great expert. As Jang's body continued to produce the poisonous fog summoned by Minimal Nine, he built up speed, jumping forward with assurance and encouraging her to follow closely. Instantly, Jang quickly dispatched several beasts with his knives, cutting their bodies into parts. With the supervisor's influence no longer a concern, the remaining beasts descended into turmoil. Jang surged forward at high speed, dashing among the animals and purposefully slicing through their ranks with his blades. With the beasts now scattered and confused, Jang recognized that they no longer posed a threat, allowing him to proceed. Immediately dispatching several beasts within minutes, he propelled himself forward with a strong leap, advancing quickly towards the supervisor. Jang focused his thoughts on the solitary target that remained. The supervisor released a threatening thunder, its look fixed fiercely on Jang. Undeterred, Jang met its gaze, declining to withdraw, mentally preparing for the looming conflict. He recognized the supervisor as the ultimate source of valuable experience. Regardless of the supervisor's efforts to defend itself, its attempts proved worthless against Jang's determined assault. Minutes before it could respond, Jang descended upon the supervisor, launching a rapid attack on its head with both blades, injecting it with Minimal Nine's poisonous fog, Despite the size disparity, within seconds, the supervisor succumbed to its wounds, falling to the ground. Jang landed atop the supervisor's dormant form, grasping the two knives as his body continued to emit Minimal Nine's venomous fog. Looking eagerly at the dead body, Jang resolved that the moment had arrived to dominate the multitude of bugs.